On today's show, it was a trade of Palooza yesterday at the trade deadline for the NFL. We break down each and every move because there are huge fantasy implications, as well as breaking down the Thursday night matchup and some mailbag. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, leave us a comment, and enjoy the video. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Hey, this is DeAndre Hopkins, wide receiver for the Arizona Cardinals, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh! Welcome in. Wednesday, November 2nd. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Jason Moore, present and accounted for. Yes, sir. Mike, the Fantasy Hitman. Hello. Black shirt, white hat, Cadillac. Very good reference. I'm Andy Holloway. Welcome in. The Deucer's Alley is full. About to time bomb. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the Borgogan, the Judge, and Mr. Borland. Big show today. Trade deadline yesterday in the NFL. Looking like... Oh, man. Looking like fantasy football trade deadlines. Got, uh, got spicy. It was, uh, it was pretty fun. Uh, we were refreshing often. Uh, on the countdown to the deadline. I mean, like, would you call refreshing every, I don't know, five to ten seconds often? Yeah, I would say that's pretty often. Okay, I'm just checking. But we you, were... You put five dollars out into the ether for whoever <laughs> breaks the news first because we were so yeah, was, thirsty. Yeah, we were thirsty. We were thirsty for, fellas. <laughs> and and the, <laughs> the problem was, the more news that came out, oh, we were not grateful. Oh, we were not satisfied. It just made us say, what's the next one? Well, part of that was Mike was... Uh, I had one that I really needed to hear. He wanted to see Kareem Hunt moved, and we don't get to talk about that today. For, I mean, just 100% selfish reasons that he's on my team, and should he have been traded, his value would have gone up from where it is now. Yeah, so we'll talk through all the trades. We have Ride or Die on the show, some mailbag. We also have... Uh, well, let's do this announcement at the top. I was ready for the real horns. I know. I saw it on there. Um, instead, you got that. No, we got Mike's horn. Uh, Foot Clan giveaway winners. We've been doing a giveaway over the last month, and the winners, I'd like to announce them. DJ Moore signed jersey goes to Gregory Martin. That thing has gained value in the last two weeks, fellas. <laughs> a couple yeah. weeks ago, you didn't want that thing. Uh, Jalen Waddle signed jersey to Alec Carlone. Carlone? Yep. yep. Carlone. Uh Jalen Hurts signed jersey to David Halverson and the virtual studio tour going out to Keegan. Is that Kipe? I believe so. Okay, yeah. Keegan Kipe, congratulations. Yeah, good work, everybody. We will no doubt put another giveaway together soon. Wanted to also announce the Megalobowl leader right now. Bodogs is 16 and up. With thirteen hundred and thirty points, was it was it Bodogs last week too? I think they I, overtook the, I think the it shark. Was. Yes. Fuel. So, uh, playing against the league median, it it makes for some impressive records uh, at this point in the year. Sixteen and zero. Congrats. Uh, we'll be on Spotify Live as well today, three p.m. Pacific, six oh, p.m. Eastern. It's time to party. Did you forget that you're on Spotify Live, Mike? I dude, we're at the point of the NFL season where I. Only know what day it is because the show opens and someone screams and goes, it's oh, November 2nd. And I go, okay. That's your calendar? Yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. Let's do some ride or die. Ride or die. Presented by Chevrolet. I was six feet under last week. Oh, yes, you were. You guys both went two for three, and uh, I chose to opt out of the contest. I should have gone three for three, but Mike hoodwinked me and switched up his Alvin Kamara touchdown, 
And is so that I, I switched? Yeah, you yeah you switched oh. to he was gonna get it, and so I I was on it, and then I switched back. Yeah, you had winked yourself. Jason. Yeah, okay, that's fair. That's fair. Brooksy, how you doing today? Doing great. All, All right. right, how that's are you guys? Good. Yeah, we're do- we're doing pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, just sitting here, basking in the glow of that sign behind oh, you. Man. It's does, like it, a- does it emanate heat? I hope we got the no. one with the heat. Oh yeah, for sure. Make them sweat. No like- heat. You look like you're in like a 1989 arcade. It's yeah, great. It looks it's fun. a great place yeah. to be. Uh, week nine, ride or die. What's our first prediction here, Brooksy? All right, guys. We're starting with Mike's champion, Antonio Gibson. Oh, wow. We're back to that, huh? <laughs> I, didn't, I did not say that. Former champion is, is still fine. All right. Well, he got the start in week eight, and now he's against the Vikings. Will he be a top 24 running back? Yeah, I did. <laughs> Look, my mind has been on this situation for a couple of reasons. One, I have Brian Robinson. Uh, I want to know if he's even startable. And the truth is I have no idea because I don't know what Ron Rivera is going to do. He changes his mind every two minutes. Gibson's been better. Gibson had more opportunities, but not as many more than I think people realized last week, snap count wise. It was pretty close. Yeah, they're on the ground. And they were close. they were in a pretty big game script situation where uh they were down the whole game. Uh, look, is he a top twenty-four running back? That to me, that's does he catch six passes? He had seven targets, seven receptions last week, but only played thirty-six percent of the snaps. Like you were saying, Andy wasn't super involved. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and ride. I'm gonna ride with Gibson this week. This yeah. is this is by far they're the playing hardest Minnesota. Line. Minnesota's actually a pretty good run defense. Uh, adjusted for schedule, they're top ten over the last six weeks. They are the number six. Uh, most difficult matchup for for running backs, and they've been playing really well. I wanted to easily. He's like, a wideout. I saw out, this. I thought. I thought die. I uh, top twenty four. He got a touchdown last week, and that was really helpful. If he doesn't get a touchdown, he's not going to be. And then I remembered six teams were on by. Yeah. And I'm like, even when he's been outside of it, he was the running back twenty five, the running back twenty seven. You take six teams out. Let's ride, baby. Over the last month he is seeing a 16 percent target share which that i mean it, the the attempts on the ground are, are not fantastic you know three five one week of ten but seven so single digits at three of those four weeks but the targets are just so valuable in in pumping up those numbers so uh, i'm with jason because of the six teams that pushes me into the ride situation okay top 20 oh man I'm okay. riding. All right, I will. I will change at top twenty. I will. Uh, I will die. I ooh. <laughs> gotta pick one, man. I this is. I will stand up for my former champion, so I will ride with him okay. into the top twenty. Well, uh, guys, I I couldn't possibly get this next one right. <laughs> In fact, um, you should know what to do just based on my answer. Kyle Pitts, Brooksy, what's the line? We're setting the line at eight fantasy points. And oh, half, what a bar! Half PPR. <laughs> yeah, I'm. Uh, well, here you go. I'm gonna ride. I, I looked at this game as well. They're playing the Chargers. They're the 32nd ranked pass defense. Um, Atlanta is. The, I think the negative game script, the need to throw the football a little bit more. I mean, this is these are the type of logical f- fallacies that I have fallen into sure. with Kyle Pitts. I will go ahead and ride eight fantasy points. So, uh, I will die. Um, I'm, I'm not going to ride. As will with, I. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to ride with Kyle Pitts. He does have, uh, three games now with eight or more fantasy points, but we are heading into week nine. So I will take the odds that are against him. He, the last two weeks. So small, small sample, but do we have a trend here of Two weeks ago, a 42% target share. This past week, a 32% target share. His routes run are actually going up in those two weeks. Could Arthur finally be removing his head from his anos and giving us Kyle Pitts targets? Probably not, but the eight-point line, I will ride with that. I uh, just and I'm and you're locked in. Uh, but I do, to point that uh, to point out something you said two weeks ago. This looks, looks like a good trend. He had a good target share right. two weeks ago. He finished that game with two point four fantasy points. He I, also had what 13, 13 attempts in that game. 
Yeah, exactly. With so like the target target share should be it, you should be arrested if you use that with Atlanta. Forty percent of nothing is nothing. Yeah, I mean it's just it's five five targets is not nothing. Okay, five targets for Kyle Pitts should I like turn, the, in, turn into yes. more than nine I like, yards. Yes. I like the over under. I like them using him around the goal line, even the game before. Right, so we had. Um, He's had a couple goal line touchdowns in the game before. They had that play that was replayed. He would have been another touchdown. Seems like they're at least designing inside the five plays for Kyle Pitts. But, of course, you know, I'm going to ride, but in the end I'll die. Geno Smith, Brooksy, what's the line here? All right, guys. Well, Geno Smith get back to being a top 12 quarterback against the uh, Cardinals. Mm. No. No, I'm going <laughs> to die this one. Ooh. I actually think the Arizona defense is a solid play here at home against Geno Smith and the Sea Chickens. Oh, we're insulting them now. Just this week. <laughs> <laughs> the division leading. I love look, uh on a personal level, I love what Geno Smith's doing. Arizona, uh they've been pretty good. Uh they held him in check in Seattle. Uh I'm going to go ahead and uh go with die on this one. I think it's it's gonna be Walker that does the damage against the Cardinals, not necessarily Geno. Yeah, I, I think that's what it really comes down to is where do you see the touchdowns coming? Do, do, does it come on the ground? If you look over the last six weeks, though, Arizona Cardinals, they're top 10 against running backs. They're 24th against quarterbacks. With the, uh, you know, Tyler Lockett's been uh, on the injury report, getting healthier and healthier. DK Metcalf was surprisingly back last week and looked, looked fine. fine. So I think with the weapons intact, I believe Geno Smith gets back to – uh, this line, I have him ranked uh, as such, so I will I will ride. Yeah, it's it's very interesting because over those last four games for the for the Cardinals, you know, if you schedule adjust their the quarterback points that they're allowing, three of those games are, have have been very positive for the opposing quarterback. The one shutdown was Geno Smith, and I feel like that was more of an outlier for the way that the the Cardinals defense has been playing. They, it's a division game, so crazy things do happen. Like you know, the Cincinnati Bengals, on paper, a far superior team than the Cleveland Browns, then just shellacked on Monday night. So strange stuff happens. But I will buy that Geno Smith will be top twelve this week. My, Let's ride. Mike's gonna ride. Or ride. Yes. Mike's gonna yes, ride. Thank you. I'm going to ride. I'm gonna die. And then that was ride or die. Presented by Chevy Silverado. Learn more about Chevy Silverado at Chevy.com. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Can I ask you just a random question at the top of news and notes before we get into the... I'll allow it. Into the <laughs> trades? Yeah. Um, we reacted on air to the Kadarius Tony trade. It was very comical. Yeah. Because we all... We, no one expected this whatsoever. So we, we had gaping mouths and we were reacting... Um, did we discuss in detail the dynasty value of Kadarius Tony? Not uh, in detail. No. What we said was that it's it's a better move for his dynasty outlook than for his redraft. Uh, but we didn't get into too much detail. We we spoke of the fact that Juju Smith Schuster and McCall Hardman are on contract years, so those guys could go away. Um, and this could be a future that is more Sky Moore and Kadarius Tony. Uh, after the trade. So, yeah, I guess that leads into these other trades that took place. I just was curious what you viewed. Now that we know he's healthy, the, you know, this year, next year, was just kind of curious. Oh, yeah, it that. has to be up. I don't I, – I wouldn't go out of control with, with that, but the value is up compared to two weeks ago. Okay. TJ Hawkinson was traded to the Minnesota Vikings, the Lions. Uh, I don't know what they're doing. Honestly, the Vikings? No. Oh, nope. that's why I said the Lions at oh, the beginning I'm of that sorry. sentence. I have no idea what the Lions are doing. This trade makes zero sense to me. Um, they traded Hawkinson away in division to the Vikings, one of the better young tight ends, for a 2023 second round pick and a 2024 third. So they get one pick in next year's draft in the second round, um, but they also had to give up a fourth round pick and a conditional fourth in 2024. So 
the Vikings, they're making their move to compete this year and into the future with TJ Hawkinson. Uh, you talk about dynasty value of Irv Smith. Go ahead and delete it. Yeah. And uh, the Lions, well, the implications here, this happened live on the show. We talked about, you know, Amon Ra. He's going to be a primary target rest of season. Yeah, he already was, but that's just an extra few targets going his way. Uh, you saw his value at the end of last season when Hawkinson was gone, uh, you know, Amon Ra to the sun. Um, so he is I, I, the God of the sun. Right, yes. exactly. Uh, for Hawkinson's value, I think it is mostly just sideways. You have a history with Kirk Cousins of utilizing a, a tight end as far as his career goes. Um, you saw Munt get in the end zone this last week and it looked like they were going to use Irv a little bit more, but he got injured. So this is just a team that's saying, Hey, we've got one loss and we lost what we view as an important part of our offense. Let's go do a two, four swap essentially. Yeah. And, and bring in Hawkinson who still has another year on his contract. Uh, you know, when, when I saw this, I thought it must be, he's up for a massive contract. And so they're going to get out of that. But you still have some time. Well, yeah. They, if you're thinking, looking long term, like Andy, what are they doing? It is next year is the the fifth year, so he becomes a basically a ten million dollar player, and we've seen first round picks who are going into that fifth year, they occasionally cause a bit of a ruckus during the off season of saying you're going, you need to pay me now. I don't want to go into this year with this being my only guaranteed money. What what I have a problem with is okay so they get a second round draft pick it's going to be late um you probably are looking for a player that might end up like tj hawkinson if you're lucky and you're in a constant rebuild i mean it's just a constant rolling rebuild of futility i don't know that's just my but opinion it, but is hawkinson the the impact that hawkinson can make to this detroit lions team is it worth you're going to have to put a bunch of money into stabilizing him as a part of your future. Well, maybe not, but I, you get another year of viability from him, and obviously Minnesota, a much more successful historical franchise, found it worthy of sacrificing these assets for him. From TJ Hawkinson's fantasy value, you know they it's they fine. they gave up a lot. I don't think it real. I don't think it goes up. I mean, my, no. I would vote that it's neutral to slight reduction. I mean, they probably neutral. Yeah, I think it's yeah. neutral. I, I, I don't see it as a – I wouldn't move him up. I wouldn't move him down. But a, who I do move up is Kirk Cousins. This is really sure. valuable to have a tight end that can get out in space. And, and you know, I Hawkinson is going to keep doing what Hawkinson has done. And what he has done is far more than what the tight ends for the Minnesota Vikings have done this year. So that that's just, uh, you know, going to, to raise the water level for Kirk Cousins and the Vikings offense as a whole. I think NFL teams are finding it – more viable to move draft picks. You know, we talk about it in the uh, fantasy world where, you know, the draft pick in a dynasty league, it's not a known commodity. Right. It's exciting. It's fun. It, in, you know, it, it builds in a infinite ceiling for every player you draft because you've never seen them on a football field. And maybe you get the next Justin Jefferson, but maybe you get the next Royce Freeman, the next Justin Blackman, right. the next Nikhil Harry, NFL teams are now taking this approach like, look, we're just going to go get the player that we already know knows how to play the position we need them to. That's what the Bills chose to do by trading for Naeem Hines. They went and they acquired Naeem Hines from the Colts. They sent Zach Moss in a conditional sixth away, which really, you know, it's not, it's not a lot. Giving no. that away to get a player that is proven, trusted, um, spoken highly of and can play third down, you know, it doesn't seem like rookies are in a position to be trusted on third down, but Naeem Hines will go into Buffalo mm -hmm. with a role <laughs> alongside Devin Singletary. Uh, they didn't get McKissick in the offseason. They drafted James Cook. Yep. Yeah, that, that makes sense. But um, but but they get Naeem Hines and they ensure that they have a veteran in that spot. Yeah, this is really upsetting for Jason anyone. Jason screamed <laughs> from the bathroom. <laughs> Jason was in the bathroom yeah, around was... the trade deadline, and I heard a scream. Yeah, that's how the news was broken to me. Yeah, uh, all I, and this was right at the deadline. This one was, you know, I think within the last ten minutes, right up until the 
uh, you know, the clock strikes midnight. Yeah, this trade was constipated right up into the deadline. <laughs> exactly. And, um, uh, you know, for me, this is purely selfish, just like uh, we all are when it comes to fantasy football. I've, I've got uh, Devin Singletary as, you know, my important backup running back, and I think this really hurts his value. Singletary's value has come this season when he is – the guy when he's on the field 70% of the time when he is involved in the passing game and soaking up targets uh, that just seems like it's poof vanished Zach Moss has been a healthy scratch the last two weeks now I expect them to have three active running backs every single week going forward some of the targets are going to go Naeem Hines way I don't think it's good for anybody it, it, it nerfs the value of uh, James Cook it nerfs the value of Devin Singletary and Naeem Hines is at best a sideways move. I don't I don't think you look at this because he's now going to be, you know, the the fourth piece in this offense and he was probably more valuable let me, uh, to let me, the Colts offense. Can I cheer you up? I doubt it, but I would love for you to try. Let me give you the the rosier picture for Devin Singletary. Okay. The rosier picture is that Devin Singletary was a top six running back three times mm -hmm. in the final four weeks last year with a total of four targets between those three games that I am giving you. So Devin Singletary is a great running back. He doesn't have to have targets to produce. Um, so but I he think he's rushing touchdowns. How many he, touchdowns did he have in that time period? He had rushing touchdowns in each of those games. Which he's had zero this year. He had five rushing touchdowns in four games during that the, that last stretch. Correct. It, it, my point is just that I he has the ability to still be a flexible player. They didn't. They don't have a lack of trust in Singletary. No, they they, they have a need to ensure that position is safe for the playoffs. Because if you lost Singletary, think about that. Yeah. If Singletary went out for that Buffalo team that is pushing for a title. The favorites, I think, or by, up there. by far. If you lose him, you are you are looking at a playoffs with James Cook and Zach Moss, and that wasn't one they wanted to enter. Yeah, that's not one you're going to win a Super Bowl with. I that's you my know, best effort, Jason. I appreciate it. I need more of it, but what I need to see is I need to see Singletary on the field seventy percent of the snaps this week and next week. You know, during that stretch last year where he he's not the yeah, he best He was out pass there catcher. almost every play. Exactly. He was uh 93%, 80%, 76%. So we need him to be involved. I think with three backs active, it's going to be difficult for him to do, but it's That's a fair. high powered offense. So yeah. touchdowns can come his he way. He he was still a nervous start before Naeem Hines arrived, he right? Was. I mean, uh Hi, and Naeem Hines is uh under contract through next year. Or wait, through 2024. Yeah, I was going to say that's so, got to be the reason that uh, so, they got rid of him. Yeah, they they have him for a couple of years, but it's like James Cook dynasty value. Is that just? Yeah, it's pooped. Is on. that it completely evaporated here? I mean, yeah, it's it's really tough in Buffalo, anyways, to to have any sort of dynasty optimism around that backfield yeah. when your quarterback's a running back, a second round pick. And and here's the thing, uh, Yikes. what does it do for? The Colts, right? They they are in a situation where right now I think we'd all agree they're probably a bottom 10 offense, right? I mean, Sam, Sam Ellinger, um, the offensive line, what they've done so far, does deleting Naeem Hines from the equation give you any encouragement for the, you know, kind of the stabilizing of a passing game for Jonathan Taylor? <laughs> I, saw, I saw you say um, with this trade that now – uh, Jonathan Taylor's locked into a top 30 running back. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> that made me giggle. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, it, it should be slightly better for Jonathan Taylor, probably get an extra target or two uh, through most games. Uh, the, our one-game sample of Sam Ellinger uh, was <laughs> thank not – yeah, Thank you. Uh, he did I'm not – Sorry, I pronounced it correctly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you. Um, he did not really target the running backs, but uh, too small of a sample, and I – you know, I'm still betting on Jonathan Taylor to be very good rest of season. Uh, it's too late for me, Jason. I know, I know. I wish he was really good for me earlier. Let's take a quick break, and then let's talk about the Chase Edmonds trade. All right, I said it before the break. We'll talk about the Chase Edmonds trade. I only call it the Chase Edmonds trade because we're fantasy football players. This trade is uh, should be called the Bradley Chubb trade. Mm -hmm. 
Um, Who? Chase, Chase Edmonds. Chase Edmonds was a um, a toss into it of sorts uh, because they weren't tossing him the ball often enough. He had been basically worked out. I feel of, like it was a salary dump. Yeah, I mean they they it was it, it was, was. A, it was a toss out. It was like a, please take him yes. back so we can go get Jeff Wilson. Yeah, and the the uh, Dolphins making their move, feeling more comfortable with running backs that Mike McDaniel has already played with or coached with. Uh, Raheem Mostert going to continue being the lead back, and then they add Jeff Wilson as a better complement that fits his system than Chase Edmonds, who was losing snaps to Salvin Ahmed and Miles Gaskin the week before. Yeah, it, Chase Edmonds was did not work out for the Miami Dolphins. The addition of Jeff Wilson is interesting. What it will do to Raheem Mostert, perhaps not this week, but I mean, it could be as soon as this week that no, that Jeff Wilson knows the system and knows the coach, so he could maybe just go right back, uh, right into his role. But Mostert was getting so much work, and McDaniel has been with Mostert here for a few years now and knows I can't keep doing this for the the long term success of this team. I can't overload Raheem Mostert with all of these carries because his body is going to break down. So it to me, Jeff Wilson becomes probably probably just an insurance running back, but he may work into flex value. And Raheem Mostert drops a probably from an RB two ish to like just a RB three flex type of a play. Yeah, the last time we saw them together. Uh, it was Jeff Wilson who was used more in the passing game, running more routes. Raheem Mostert wasn't Getting really in, touchdowns. involved in, in that part. Raheem Mostert was kind of the between-the-20s breakaway speed rusher. Now, that was a couple years ago and a different team. So um, Jeff Wilson is coming in as the backup right now. He is a, He's a must-pickup the way that I want to chase Edmonds on my team because Raheem Mostert is one play away from an injury at all times, and Jeff Wilson – he he looked good for the 49ers. Yeah. I mean, he's had juice, so he's someone you pick up, you put on your bench, and you hope if you're a Mostert manager that it, he doesn't take the touchdowns in the passing game away. Yeah, Mostert's been very good. I he think has. I think a big part of this is the same thing the Bills did, which is if your lead running back goes down, what are you left with for the playoffs? And they were not comfortable with Chase Edmonds or the other guys. And Jeff Wilson, if he has to carry the load for them because of an injury – capable knows the system and uh you know it's a good move for the dolphins they they pick up a pass rusher that's going to make a huge difference and they end up with jeff wilson and they kind of revamp the backfield on the other side the chase edmonds and the broncos side i think you're going to want to hold on to chase edmonds for one week and then probably <laughs> drop him. We got to wait and see. They already uh, came out and confirmed Melvin Gordon's the starter. Right. We want to uh, wait and see if, if he is uh, more involved than what they're saying. But he's probably coming into the Mike Boone role, which is not valuable in a three-way committee. What he will do is simply hurt the value of Melvin Gordon and hurt the value of Latavius Murray. Because, again, I they're think, on by. I think Chase. Yeah, oh, you'll, man. You'll have to wait. So that's two, I'm, two I am, weeks. I am willing to cut Edmonds. Yes. Edmonds had yes. more value as the single and sole backup to the oft-injured Raheem Mostert than he has. I as, agree. Uh, even though now he's going to be on the field probably more than he was for the Dolphins, it's it's going to be irrelevant unless there's an injury there. And then when there is, he doesn't take over full uh, you know, command of being a really good insurance running back. Now he's just in a different committee. So yeah, I would I would move on from Edmonds for now. If you, if you need a roster spot and you probably do, uh, I'm fine cutting him. There was uh, a, bringing this up because of you know the, the Raheem Mostert getting overworked, getting a compliment back in there. There was some really interesting uh, talk on Cowboys Twitter talking about you know Tony Pollard had just such massive success here as the the only running back because Zeke missed the game, and they were you know, talking about and then Jerry Jones comes out and says no Zeke is still going to be involved infuriates the the Tony Pollard truthers but then they were breaking down like some of the things that Tony Pollard was saying to the coaching staff of like right before uh he had his huge touchdown run he was say he was telling me he's like guys I'm on I'm basically on empty like I need rest and and like as the game was going along that they were saying well hey Tony did you were you tired by the end he's like oh I was I was beyond tired I mean I just I go out there and and keep playing, but it was really interesting to hear 
because we, we we look at these guys as superheroes. Like you're you're a running back, you're a super, you're a star running back. You could play a full NFL game and get all these touches, no problem. Yeah, or like a video game character. Yeah. It, and it, you're like the fifteenth carries the same as the first. But they run out of stamina, and so it was. You know, he's never had more than fourteen carries in a game in his entire career. And do you know how many he got in that game? No, I don't. Fourteen. <laughs> he literally that was his cap in his entire career. I think even in college. And, you know, everyone right. expects him to go out there and get 25 carries. If he's empty on 14. Yeah. So it was, it was just, it was. There's an, a reason he can run that fast. It was, yeah. it was you know? interesting to hear the behind the scenes of these guys, you know, kind of admitting to, like, yeah, I was really tired. I needed, I need other guys out there with me. All right. Uh, help me break this one down. Chase Claypool was traded to the Chicago Bears. This was a big deal. Two, uh, 2023 second round pick back to Pittsburgh. Chase Claypool. You know, very talented, uh, has had ebbs and flows in the fantasy world. Yeah. You know, I want to hear what your expectations are for Chase Claypool in Chicago with the, uh, dare I say, ascending offense, along with how it would affect your willingness to, you know, I guess your long-term confidence and short-term confidence in Darnell Mooney. Yeah, this one is, is I think, good for fantasy because Chase Claypool doesn't take a hit down. Even though you're going to a worse offense where you're not getting as many targets, you are now going from the third or maybe even fourth option in the offense to potentially the number one. We don't know how it'll shake out between Chase Claypool and Darnell Mooney, who will be the one and who will be the two. I'm not excited. I wasn't previously excited to play Chase Claypool. I am still not excited to play Chase Claypool. But what this does that is good is it really boosts Justin Fields having another. You've seen, you know, some targets, deep targets to Equinemia St. Brown mm -hmm. and Nikhil Harry. and Dante Pettis. Dante Pettis. And, you know, there are, there is room for Chase Claypool to be much better than them in the same offense, the same system that the Bears are running. Like, you can just swap those players out and go, oh, you'll get more from Claypool than you got with those other wide receivers. So I think this is good news for Fields. But I, the, the place I'm most excited about, I know you want to hear um, about the long-term outlook of Darnell Mooney, but I'm, I'm excited about the Steelers guys. I, I'm excited about the fact that this opens up Kenny Pickett, Deontay Johnson to really just be a two-man show in the wide receiver room. You would be talking about George Pickens. Yes. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think it's more of an upgrade for the Muth. Uh, than anybody else to, for the for the Pittsburgh Steelers of locking in his target share for Chase Claypool. Uh, saw some people on Twitter talking about what will be interesting is Mooney has been playing a decent amount in as a slot wide receiver, and he's he really has success as an outside wide receiver. So does where Chase Claypool has been playing in the slot this year and. It will stay that way with Harry and, on the outside. I yeah, think. and does now he move into the slot for the Chicago, pushing Darnell Mooney to the outside, really unlocking him. So there is there is a world where Darnell Mooney is actually better for for fantasy purposes and long term. Uh, I mean, long term, this is very exciting to me for Justin Fields. Uh, I just I want him. To, I think he's good. I want him to succeed. And for Chase Claypool, it might feel like a net neutral right now but it at least brings you some hope if he's on that dynasty roster in Pittsburgh he was never going to ascend to be he was definitely never going to be the number one and he was with Pickens being there he was he was pushed down to number three maybe even four after the Muth gets another year under his belt so you at least have some optimism that perhaps rookie year Chase Claypool can show back up it was the sophomore year for him was catastrophic, but he, when you're watching that, he, I mean, it's, it's easy to, to make fun of Chase Claypool because of the, uh, the fourth down fiasco, which was a fiasco of, I'm going to celebrate while the time is running out. <laughs> that was so funny. But he also, he just didn't come down with 50, 50, uh, balls last year. And it's a 50, 50, man. Like sometimes it, it doesn't work out and it's been working out more this year. So there's at least some hope for Claypool long-term. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting, and you, you look at what makes Justin Fields a better quarterback, and honestly, look, they're running him more, but you need to give him big-body receivers. You really do. you yeah. got to give him players that are going to 
um, I would say, compensate for some of the accuracy concerns that he's shown. When he just loves to go downfield. Like, Justin Fields' favorite pass is 20-plus air yards. All right, let's talk about Calvin Ridley. Hey! Uh, hey. I love, love the tweet, and I don't have it in front of me, so I can't give you credit, but it said the Jacksonville Jaguars have pre-ordered Calvin Ridley <laughs> for next year. Yeah, that's not bad. Um, Ridley is all about this move. If you follow him on social media, uh, he's already got his hype video out there. He is ready for a new start. And he is 27 years old, going to be 28 by the time he plays a snap with Jacksonville. I mean, they have a quip. Shane McHugh, the Jags pre-order oh, Calvin Ridley. okay. Good find. There you go. Yes, the um, Jacksonville Jaguars have an abundance of receiving options. Going into next year, they'll have Calvin Ridley and Christian Kirk. What do you think about this move? Is this a rebirth for the dynasty truthers of Calvin Ridley? Calvin Ridley is a really good wide receiver. Yeah. I mean, you, you don't know how in shape he is or what's going to happen when you miss this much time. We don't have a lot of experience of, you know, a, a year and a half uh, uh, where it's not injury, but it's just a year and a half off from football and coming back. The few examples we have, I think, are usually more at, at, at running back, but they, they tend to come back fine. If he's still in his prime age-wise, I believe this is just a good move for Calvin Ridley. You're going to go to a situation with a better quarterback, and yeah, we don't know how good Trevor Lawrence is, but we know it's a better situation than Marcus Mariota and the low passing volume and yeah. next year's rookie and yada yada. So this is just two teams here, the Bears and the Jaguars, equipping their you know their young quarterbacks, giving them more weapons for the future because Claypool is a future move. This isn't this isn't a one year rental. They're probably going to re sign him. And, you know, that when you give up a two for a player right. as young as Claypool, and he is younger than their current rookie, Valus Jones, <laughs> which is hysterical, um, you know, I, I think this is good for Ridley's value, good for Trevor Lawrence's value, but obviously none of it now. Yeah, Ridley is really, and I don't say this with the joke in mind, but he is a gamble that was worth taking for Jacksonville. Sure. It's been years since we've seen him contribute, right? He was really not good before the right uh, departure yeah, had all of his his off field uh mental health issues so it's a gamble worth taking for jacksonville especially when you see what they have to pay in free agency for players you know this is an opportunity to get an established player right now uh the falcons speaking of the falcons they have designated cordero patterson to return from ir he will practice today and he looks at your tyler algier and your caleb huntley shares and he says Goodbye. Farewell, friends. I banish thee. So, they, I mean, we didn't expect this to happen so soon, or maybe we did, but uh, I didn't. Um, I mean, we'll, we'll see if he can play this weekend. Uh, that's that's still a, a pretty large step for him to, to take, but it is at least possible now. Any other news? No, we, sir. We got through it all? Impressive. Unbelievable we job. Are, we are we're good at this. Really good. Great job by us, uh, specifically the three of us. Um, <laughs> that was today's news and notes brought to you by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Thursday Night Breakdown. So they're still, they're, uh, Kyle, they're still playing this game? They're going to do it? Apparently, it's... Okay. The best and the worst. I didn't didn't realize they were gonna put this one on. I thought they would just um, just call it before anybody can get hurt. Philadelphia seven and zero, taking on the Houston Texans one five and one. The DraftKings Sportsbook line is got that tie. Sweet Eagles minus fourteen. The over under is forty five. That gives Houston fifteen points. Brandon Cooks was not traded. Oh man, and he is. He's displeased. He's not happy. He's not been good from a fantasy perspective. I think he's still a good player, but when you mix in the lack of production this year for Brandon Cooks, one one week you were, I guess, okay playing him week one, one week where he finished the wide receiver 14, the other five weeks outside the top 38, um, you mix that with some emotional problems well, uh, with the team and the Eagles defense. We did get a report that a trade was quite close between the Texans and the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, came down to 
the Cowboys didn't like the what was it the fully eighteen, 18 million guaranteed eighteen next year. guaranteed next year. The Cowboys, I my you know not involved, but my take is they Dallas was trying to push the Texans to take some of that money, trying to call a bluff of Houston they'll 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 fold and they'll do this, and the Texans did not, and now the Cowboys are sad without another wide receiver. So uh, Damian Pierce and no one else. For the oh, Houston gosh. Texans offense, yeah, yeah. There's, there's, I'm not playing Brandon Cooks. I'm not no. either. We we don't know where he's at after you know. Look, he's a good wide receiver. He hasn't been good this year, but you mix in the kind of mental unhappiness, the whatever's going on behind the scenes, where he's being held out of practices, and uh, you know, I don't know if that was because trades were coming, what promises were said. You know, he was tweeting the way that wide receivers tend to tweet, cryptic. Um, angry, <laughs> uh, you know, at the organization yeah. type of tweets. So yeah, I'm 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 off of Cooks this week against you know a a really really good Philadelphia Eagles defense and Damian Pierce. You're gonna fire him up because he just gets so to. much involvement. He's been so good for fantasy, but I don't think you can expect a great performance here this week against a really really tough team I think you should be happy with 12 13 points that's kind of like yeah. your your dream there for Mr. Pierce and I mean, the the problem on the Eagles side which if you've had these wonderful <laughs> Eagles they are great and you've experienced this all let's year fly. let's fly you're gonna have a great first half and then just turn the game off right at halftime and just say my game is over they, they don't do any of the scoring in the second half when a team can't keep up the Houston Texans probably cannot keep up. Jalen Hurts, Miles Sanders, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, and Dallas Goddard are all locks in your lineup. So it's not complicated in this game. There aren't really big debates. There aren't start-sit decisions that you're going to have outside of, you know, you know do you have confidence in Devontae Smith? He's He ping-pongs a little bit, but I, I just don't see yourself – Moving away from him? No, you got to you got to start a quality player like that. I mean, I know last week it was the AJ Brown show, three touchdowns, but I got one for you. It was still twenty seven percent of the targets. It was eight targets. Palmer, you like Josh Palmer? I this do week. like Josh Palmer. So if you had Josh Palmer, which a lot of people would have picked him up, and you've already got Devontae Smith, is there any world where you're starting Palmer? To play Atlanta, not over Devonta Smith. I I think he's too high level of a talent. The talent gap between those two guys is very wide. Devonta Smith or Michael Pittman Jr. Hmm. I what if I what if I did this? We built this city. Look, I I, I am trying right Good now. Good <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm currently try, in trade talks to try to trade. Michael Pittman away for Devonta Smith. Wow. Uh, now, I, right. I have Jalen Hurts, so this is to complete that that stack. But I view those two players very, very, very similarly. I think that they're both. I think that's fair. Uh, that's kind of the, the tier they are in. If I didn't have Jalen Hurts, I, I would just hold Pat with uh, Pittman. This week, probably go Pittman. Okay. Into the mailbag we go. Bag. Bang, bang, is it uh, too late to to uh trade cream <laughs> yeah the deadline they can't do that no, no you can you can still do it i've been saying you know the, the cleveland browns no that's too late they're not gonna do it nope you were you were okay. pretty pretty heartbroken i was i was too it, I, be, because you, it made so much sense but the browns won that was the problem they won their game and so I they think know. they're in it but you're not Cleveland. No, you're not. I wish you pain. Uh, <laughs> not the uh, people of Cleveland. But, no, I no. mean it was. It's a. It's a collateral damage. I'm sorry. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to destroy I, the team. I destroy just the people. want your football team to fail because of what they did to me. That's right. They did come out and say that uh, the first eligible week for Deshaun Watson will be his first start. Yep. Beverly, in Michigan. Would you trade Chris Olave away for Travis Etienne in a full Ooh. PPR league? I love Chris Olave, yeah, I but would. in a vacuum, the answer is yes. See, see you later, Chris. Yeah, hundred yeah. yeah. percent. Unless you, as you say, unless you don't, unless Etienne is a luxury at running back for you, and you don't have wide receivers, this is a uh, you got to go with Etienne. 
yeah, we, uh, both of these players are awesome. They're going to be great for fantasy if they're healthy the rest of the season. You take the running back. I think uh, Travis Etienne's ceiling is higher as a bell cow running back than Chris, Olave, Chris Olave's is, even in a full PPR. Sam in Minnesota. Salutations. Foot farts. What the? No. Come no, on. Brooks. Foot farts? That's not nice. That seems pretty on brand for us. So. I, I fart a lot. I, what we, would do, a, we do not what associate. What a foot fart be, though? We we say a, like a lot of shoe. poop jokes and stuff, yeah. but we keep it away from the brand. And when you combine the foot with a fart, <laughs> we will not stand. We will not stand for that. Sam, Sam, <laughs> Sam, fart face, Sam, fart face, good one, very good. <laughs> I got him. You got him. All right, really I feel good. better about it now. <laughs> that does feel good. Sam, I ain't. Oh, uh, I am, he says, in a 12 man league with mediocre to bad wide receivers, but I'm still seven and one. I am wondering if I should trade Romonster Stevenson for Jamar Chase straight up right now. Um, here, Here's what I'll Ooh, here's what I'll tell you. Uh, Ramondre, I know, is going on a buy next week. So he plays this week. I believe it is the following week that is his buy. Jamar Chase is super good. Yeah. He's also not on IR. So I I think you are thinking about your fantasy playoffs right here at seven and one. Mm -hmm. And if I'm in the fantasy playoffs and I am struggling with mediocre to bad wide receivers, I am doing this trade. Yeah, a hundred percent. It's it's tough to give up a player that's healthy who's playing great for someone that isn't. You're going to take some lumps on this for the next month, and you might have some regrets. But at seven and one, you're playoff bound. You, you you can put together a couple more wins even without Jamar Chase over the next couple of weeks and get in the playoffs. Once those playoffs start, you're playing the best teams in your league. And Jamar Chase, as we've seen already last year, he is the type of player that wins people championships. I do the deal. Yep, I would do it. Instagram question. Daryl Henderson or Gus Edwards going forward? I think I would take my shot with the Gus bus. Yep. I don't know what on earth the Rams are doing in running back, but Daryl Henderson has been tried. I mean, yeah. I, go ahead, I, so I, I'm, I'll hop in here because I'm, I lean on the other side. I lean towards Daryl Henderson. This last week was just not good. He was on the field 41% of snaps, only got the ball four times, but he was, he was dealing with illness. Um, I'm not sure how much that factors in or not. I'm hoping that that factors in a lot. And like that was the reason that you saw a Rivers not run through it uh, this last mm -hmm. week over and over. Thank you. Um, you we've seen Daryl Henderson be fa valuable for fantasy in this offense when he's got the opportunity. We know that they aren't trading for uh, a Kareem Hunt type of player. It does not look like Cam Akers will play for them again. Cam Akers has said he does not want to play for them uh, again and is hoping for some kind of amicable release which would save the Rams money. So They have uh, said that Kyron Williams might play this week. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would expect it to be a Daryl Henderson, uh, Kyron Williams two-man show. Oh, man. Daryl Henderson is not scoring touchdowns. Gus Edwards could. Well, we're in, we're in a bad situation here with the Monday night game for Gus Edwards, day-to-day -day with the hamstring, don't know if he's going to play, goes on by next week, but... Long term, if I have to pick between these two guys, it's Gus Edwards. Yeah, I just can't imagine your. I can't imagine Gus is active for Monday, and if he's not, you're talking about two weeks. You know, it's three weeks from now is the first time you're going to be able to play him. Will you play him in that first game back? I, I Probably. You think? I mean, can well, look, you, can I don't want to play, play Daryl Henderson yeah. ever, and it gives me the ability <laughs> to not play him if I don't have him on my team. Yeah. Right. The thing about Gus being out for two weeks is he can't hurt you in your active starting lineup where Daryl Henderson is going to do that. I mean, would okay. you? Here, right, that's here, a good here, counter. I mean, would you try? Would you drop Daryl Henderson for Kyron in a vacuum? Oh. So I'm not talking about the perceived trade value right, right, of right, Daryl right. Henderson. I'm just talking about. Mike, you are lining your roster up for the playoffs. It is it is shooting your shots and a very, very high-risk maneuver, but I oh, I think I would do it. I, got I some, think I would do it. Okay. I got some injury news to catch you up with. It's, such, it's so good. Um, the Colts have signed Jordan Wilkins off the practice squad. Uh, Jonathan Taylor is not practicing. Oh, come on. Not 100%. And um, told you, man, you got to bail out Deion Jackson. What's Deion Jackson? Zach Moss this is a 
It's a disaster. Zach Moss coming over, you know, today. Total loss. <laughs> Uh, I you know the, uh, they've got a bad matchup this week, right? Uh, I'm pretty sure the Colts are Patriots. New England. Yeah, so they're about as bad as it gets. But Deion Jackson with no Naeem Hines, I don't and think if Jonathan Taylor doesn't play. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if he's going to play or not. And here, here's what's confusing to me too. For those following along on the Keenan Allen saga, why do we get a DNP on Monday report? Yeah, I don't know. And then nothing. Like there hasn't been a single whisper. Like, does Tuesday not exist in the world? We don't, there hasn't been a whisper on Keenan on Tuesday or Wednesday so far. Because we don't usually get anything until Wednesday. Like, the practice reports start coming in on that day. That the, the report for Monday was so bizarre. Uh, but I I think it's more of the absence being so notable that Keenan is still getting treatment and not even participating in walkthrough type things. It's super cool. Super cool not to have your players. Yep. Um, geez. All right. Uh, Instagram question. We'll close with this. How much dinner butter is consumed on Thanksgiving? <laughs> on Thanksgiving? This, this is a Jason question. I mean, that's at least, if, if you're just talking individually, not family-wide, because family-wide, you're probably talking somewhere in the range of, of 12 to 15 bricks um, of dinner butter. Dinner, dinner butter is a, a brick-based Dinner butter? butter does come it's in a It's not in a, uh, a it, Oh, that's what he's calling a brick. A brick. Yeah, like no, a normal a, butter. No, well, a brick is in the paper. Then there's tubs. Yeah, the, I think he means the paper. Yeah, I'm, I mean the paper, but unlike you know a stick, it's not a stick of butter. It's oh, it's a, not a stick. No, no, no. It's it's a brick of butter. Think about like what you view. It's like a double stick. Uh, like like a, together? When, when you get a brick of cream cheese. They have those of of butter of dinner butter. Heck yeah, they do. <laughs> uh, what? Oh, for sure. I mean, it, this thing. I, I hope this. Thanksgiving season, they start coming in the Velveeta brick size. Uh, I ha they have not started manufacturing. Seems like you need a whole yet. new butter tray for this uh, this dinner butter. Your butter tray is another turkey platter. You bring out a turkey platter. <laughs> okay. You put the bricks. This of man loves butter. Dinner butter. It's an on actual there. brick <laughs> that you set it on. And um, the the truth is, you should consume half a brick by yourself over the course of you know it, sure in not only. Rolls, spreading, but mashed in the potatoes. Cooking, absolutely. When you uh, more rolls, get your mashed potatoes. Just put a little slice of dinner butter right on top of that. Uh, I the the bringing up dinner butter right now is ex. The, the timing is excellent. Okay, uh, if you weren't with us, with us last year, every year uh, right around Thanksgiving, we do our annual Megalodon show, which <sighs> is. <sighs> It it's is coming. It's fast approaching. It's it's the the biggest and longest and largest fantasy footballers podcast of the year. Last year, uh, or every year, we give a secret hashtag. Last year it was dinner butter. We got up to what number three? Number two. Number two. Number, we the got whole, we, were, we were right behind Thanksgiving. Yes. So the number two trending hashtag on Twitter was dinner butter That's for right. a while. That's right. I'm very excited. To make a make another push here, boys. Okay. See if we can get the number one trending. See if we can take over Thanksgiving. Yes. Okay. With a new hard. hashtag. Well, oh yeah, it has to okay. be new. All right. Well, it's, yes. Dinner it's butter. Secret. Dinner butter came right out of that episode. I mean, that we we had never heard of it before. Right. So it was it was illuminating. Reminder: We are on Spotify later today, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. Join us there. Never not working. Matchup previews. Starts of the week and the boom boom kicker on tomorrow's episode of the show. Thank you for supporting the podcast. Shout out to the Foot Clan over at jointhefoot.com. You are awesome. Thank you so much. We'll catch you tomorrow. We'll see you tonight, everybody. Party room. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers. <laughs>